Hello friends. Welcome back to the library. As always, I have a few more recommendations for you to check out. And also, as always, they are curated to a particular theme. So today's collection of recommendations is based around the theme of erotic fiction. So I think there is a lot of value in erotic fiction. I think it's a totally valid art form. Um, we all experience lulls and periods of less imagination in our love lives and I think erotic fiction can be an excellent way to gather new ideas, to feel inspiration, even just to be re-energized around the subject of our erotic lives. So of course we are all aware of the modern era's most famous piece of erotica, Fifty Shades of Grey. And I think many of us came away from that let's say, as unfulfilled and unsatisfied as bad sex can make a person. But let's say you did go looking for something else along those lines. If you went to the same places that Fifty Shades was sold, you would probably have found a few variations on that theme. For example, uh, Sylvia Day would always be on the shelf next to um, Fifty Shades and uh, she's a great author of erotica she's much better her stories, she has lots of stories and bo books um, some set in the present day, some set in history some in a series of three books, some standalone works. But authors who started writing erotica or started publishing erotica around the same time or just after Fifty Shades became successful, they're not difficult to hunt down. So I wanted to recommend to you some things that perhaps you wouldn't come across in your um, research. So the first one I want to start with is an Australian author. So my country. And uh, so there's a pretty good chance you might not have heard of her. I have two of her books in my library. So her name is Chrissy Neen. And she has written Holly White and the Incredible Sex Machine. That's her latest book. But I have not read this. I just bought it. So I can't talk to you about it yet. But it is a very interesting title and I presume a very interesting premise. And the other one I have is called triptych or triptych depending how you pronounce that. So Chrissy Neen is her name. Neen K-N-E-E-N. And she is almost exclusively a writer of erotic fiction. I first discovered her when about ten, nine or ten years ago, she was writing a blog 
called Furious Vaginas. And it was kind of a joke, the title, because her best friend, also a writer, was writing a blog where he had committed to writing a short story every day to kind of jumpstart his um, writing process. And his blog was called Furious Horses. So Chrissy decided she was going to write a piece of erotic fiction or memoir every day. And that's how Furious Vaginas came about. And she ended up chronicling a huge amount, if not the entirety of her sex life up to that point, by writing a small story about it every day. And that became a published memoir about about this long, actually, called Affection. So that's where she started. This is her third or fourth title, I think. And it's called Triptych because it is three stories. So separate sets of characters, separate lives, separate shenanigans. So I'll read to you from the blurb. Susanna. Susanna pursues sexual adventure online and finds an anonymous soulmate among the onanistic torsos. Is it possible he lives in her own building? The second one is Lida. Lida's first love brings tenderness, heartbreak and a powerful sexual awakening at the behest of Paul and Rachel, two very different best friends. And the third one, as time passes, some couples start to become like brother and sister. For Aaron and Catherine, it's a little more complicated. So Chrissy Neen's work is always lyrical, it's humorous, I would say she's sardonic, and she loves to play with taboos. This has gotten her into trouble sometimes, and perhaps, perhaps this is not a beginner's erotica, because it certainly doesn't deal with traditional relationships traditional gender roles and gender dynamics, even traditional family roles. And one of the reviews on the front says, not many self-confessed perverts can write as well as Chrissy Neen. And you can see the front cover is a very close-up detail of a Japanese-style um, picture um, it's with some tentacles and a naked body, so it's probably taken from some tentacle porn. <laughs> Chrissy Neen does love tentacle porn, um, I think possibly from a humorous point of view as well as an erotic one. Um, so that tells you what kind of a writer she is. She likes to push boundaries. If you want to read some stories that will probably go beyond the limits of the kind of, you know, um, supermarket shelf erotica we're seeing today, Chrissy Neen is the one for you. Now, if you like your erotica a bit more poetic and a bit more grounded in stories, involved stories with deeply fleshed characters, and if you like your erotica to be a bit longer, then this next author is for you. So this is Nikki Gemmel. I have three of her books here. The one that introduced me to her is probably her most famous book. It's called The Bride Stripped Bear. 
and you can see it says anonymous here. So you can be cynical about this, but I don't really mind. Originally, this was published as and marketed as an anonymous sexual memoir that was found in the home of a woman who had disappeared and her car, her abandoned car, had been found on a cliff somewhere in England and her mother had found the memoir and sent it to a publishing house and said, I don't know what happened to my daughter but this was the secret of her life and maybe this could help locate her. So of course there was a lot of hype around this book. Eventually the publisher and the author had to admit that that was all just a ruse. You can see I've dog-eared a lot of the book. I find it very quotable. The premise is a woman is on her, yes, her honeymoon in Morocco and she discovers a really awful secret about her marriage and about her husband. And it throws her into a tailspin and, and a really emotional discovery of wondering what, what to do with her life now and what part of her sexuality and her womanliness was being dishonoured and starved by being in a marriage that wasn't really true and so um, in opening herself up to new experiences and new people she embarks on this incredible moving poetic sexual awakening it's very erotic it's very affecting not least because this book is written in second person present tense so you do this you do that you decide and for that reason it really gets under your skin I've read it many times and I definitely recommend it but the book I think I like the most of hers is her second novel or it may not be her second but it's the second that I read and you can see by the style of the cover that it obviously came out around the same time as Fifty Shades because they're trying to give it the same look just like all those books were at that time but this is nothing like Fifty Shades in that it is excellent This one is about a woman um, in her, I think, 40s. She's quite happily married, two sons, lives in England, but she's originally from Australia. And she's come to a point in her marriage where she's feeling pretty unfulfilled, pretty bored, and wondering about all the lost potential of, of her sexuality. So it's a pretty common theme in Nikki Gemmell's work. And she starts recollecting the, um, the sexual awakening of her late teens, really her first sexual awakening in life, um, back in rural Australia in the hot scrubby forest um, when she was a wild young thing. So the blurb says... Smothered by marriage and family, a woman feels life slipping through her fingers. She becomes preoccupied with thoughts of her early education in love at the hands of Toll, a man like no other she has known. Memories of the affair, Toll's appetite for her pleasure and her trusting desire, consume her. But the mysterious end to their intimacy left her confused and unwilling to love again with all her heart. 
discovering the woman she once was is an erotic journey back into the past and an exploration of reawakened passion. So the words sexual awakening and sexual reawakening get bandied around a lot, but it's quite a potent sort of circumstance, I think. Um, so this is, you know, look back at what it is to be a teenager in love. I guess he's a mysterious older man, slightly older, he might be in his early 20s. He's an artist. He introduces her to so much sexuality, so much experimentation, so much pleasure, and at a time when her family life is very difficult, her home life as a child and as a teenager is quite devoid of affection and love. And um, But then, of course, it kind of breaks her. So I have, like, underlined a lot of passages in this book, so let me give you an example. You have fallen for a flop of hair and the curve of a back. How can that be? So fast, just a back, a hand through a fringe, irrational and senseless, but you're always doing this, with boys on a bus or behind the counter of a milk bar or in a school art room. All it takes is the nape of a neck, the shyness in a glance, a curve in a lip, and you're gone instantly. The mere idea of them. Maddened by all of it, an electric fence he has switched on, ever alert, waiting, poised, ever ready to crackle and fizz and jump for whatever he wants. In passion that has failed is a seed of insanity. Nikki Gemmell's writing is very lyrical and sensual, extremely sensual, metaphorical, and also fragmented. She writes in quite short chapters, just vignettes, you know, like two or three pages at a time, and the sentences are often in fragments, kind of almost conversational. And that really draws you in. Definitely recommend this one of, of all of them. This is probably the sexiest. But I'll just quickly talk to you about the other one. Her latest, I think. This is the latest one I've got. Is called I Take You. So this is a woman in marriage, again. And this book is kind of a tribute to Lady Chatterley's lover. It's very obviously based on, on that. So it's a married couple who are quite high society, very rich. And her life is not sexless by any stretch of the imagination. It's actually quite dark and sexy in a... In a um, dominant and submissive kind of way, but it's loveless, so much in the style of Lady Chatterley's lover, she conceives of a passion for a gardener. This one is not written in second person, it's in third person present tense.
once. Connie would have thought a woman could have died of shame, but instead of which the shame died. Just like that, so D. H. Lawrence wrote, shame, which is fear and judgment, and with the death of shame she was released. A regular, everyday woman, any woman, of demure and considered tastes. Raised by an empowered mother to be an empowered woman, and yet deep down she was plumed into transcendent life by this. How? Why? It doesn't make sense, yet it seems like something deeply animal, biological, these moments of vividness when she surrenders to something quite disconnected from everything else in her life. Baubles of otherness. Oh yes. Surrenders her body by relinquishing her mind. Such a delicate balancing act. The next one I want to tell you about is also a collection of shorter stories rather than novels and it's one of the most classic pieces of erotica there is actually but just in case you haven't explored it let's look at Delta of Venus by Anais Nin so this was published in 1978, so it's not new by any stretch of the imagination. It is a collection of 15 short erotic stories, so this is great if you can't really sustain your attention on this sort of story, or perhaps you're just looking for something to stimulate you quickly. The blurb says, Anais Nin's Delta of Venus is a stunning collection of sexual encounters from the queen of literary erotica. Well, she was then. From Matilde's lust-filled Peruvian opium den to the Hungarian baron driven insane by his insatiable desire, the passions and obsessions of this dazzling cast of characters are vivid and unforgettable. The Delta of Venus is a deep and sensual world that evokes the very essence of sexuality. So the story behind Delta of Venus is that Anais Nin had a patron, an anonymous patron who was very rich, and would pay her to write these erotic stories. Now, he was quite voracious in his appetite, so he wanted new stories all the time, and he would write to her, demanding another, another, and so she had to come up with new characters, new scenarios, new sexual practices, new settings, all the time. So as a consequence, there's kind of something for everyone in this book. Perhaps the only negative I would say about it is that in 2017 it is a trifle quaint. You know, um, what was kind of considered outlandish or slightly taboo or scandalous in 1978 is really not so now. But it's still very um, titillating and she's an excellent writer so it's easy to enjoy. Now the final story I want to share with you is not a book. It's an e-book. So as I'm sure you know, online publishing is the way of the future, I think, and um, there is just as much quality to be found in the uh, e-publishing world as there is on a physical bookshelf. So I was deeply dissatisfied by the uh, toxic relationship at the heart of Fifty Shades and also deeply dissatisfied by the nature of the BDSM in it or at least the lack of real BDSM and the attitude that 
to be interested in that particular kink. There had to be something wrong with you. So I became quite um, enamoured of this blog where a very talented author called Jenny Armentrout was uh, blogging, live blogging as she read Fifty Shades. She had a very funny but very insightful, considered, interesting response to the story. And as it turned out, she's not only a great blogger, she's a great writer of erotica. And like many of us, she was dissatisfied with the, um, the whole Fifty Shades trilogy, but still titillated by the premise at the heart of it. So, um, you know, an, a billionaire and a young, sort of less experienced woman. So she embarked on writing something like that herself. And she has achieved, I think, probably the best um, older billionaire and younger woman in a BDSM relationship uh, story out there. So I'll just show you sort of the ebook, um, you know, the cover. It's called The Boss, and she writes under the name Abigail Barnett, and that's what the cover looks like. And it's uh, four books, I think, for a series of four stories. And the premise is uh, Sophie is a 22, 23 year old woman, an assistant working in publishing in a, a successful women's fashion magazine in New York. And the company, I think, gets bought out. And the CEO of that company is a man called Neil who I think is maybe 40, early 40s, and he's a billionaire, obviously. So a much more realistic age to be a billionaire than Christian Grey. So Sophie is haunted by memories of this amazing one-night stand that she had in an airport hotel a couple of years back when she was like 18 or 19, um, had a the night of her life and some of the best sex of her life with, well, it turns out this older guy, Neil. And then, so she's quite horrified when he comes in to be the new CEO of the company. And she wonders, does he remember the night? What did he think about it? Because they never spoke again. And of course, we do find out that he does remember her. And so the difficulty that they find themselves in now is he's her boss so it would be quite inappropriate for them to have a relationship and um, it could result in the loss of her job not necessarily his because he owns the company so it's a difficult um, line to walk when they are so attracted to each other anyway this uh, this story has the most constructive, adult, healthy, erotic relationship I think I've ever read about. Um, they genuinely respect each other. They have a kicking great time um, experimenting with BDSM and kink and fetish. Um, it's very imaginative. And um, Jenny Armentrout slash uh, Abigail Barnett writes beautifully. Her um, sex scenes are incredible, they're not cliché, they're not awkward, you don't find yourself kind of confused and gross feeling like you do with Fifty Shades. It's all just um, beautiful and sexy and hot and um, adult and satisfying. So I definitely recommend that ebook. It starts with the boss and then there's a few more and when I downloaded it, I think it was free because she was offering it through the blog. Even now, on Kindle, it's probably like two or three dollars. So a lot cheaper than buying a paper book. And she also writes a lot of other kinds of erotica. So under a few different names, she writes like historical fiction. Um, I think she has written some paranormal romance and paranormal erotica. All of which I'm very excited to get into. So those are my recommendations for you. 
if you are interested in erotic fiction, or you weren't but you now are, please check out these authors. And uh, if you do, please do come back and let me know how you got on. And also if you have some authors of erotica that you really enjoy, I would love to know about it. It's hard to find good erotica, so um, anything that you might want to suggest is very welcome. So thank you for coming back to the library once again. I hope you have enjoyed your time here with me and been inspired. And I will see you very soon.